there's a new murder capital of the United States. New Orleans now leads the nation in murders per capita. There have been more than 200 homicides so far this year in the Big Easy. The jury began deliberating in this case on Friday and handed down a verdict around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Now, Telly Hankton was charged with nearly a dozen racketeering charges, and he was found guilty on nine of those charges. A man once described as one of New Orleans' most dangerous criminals is now the center of a federal indictment. But the feds didn't stop with 36-year-old Telly Hankton. And it took the jury about three and a half hours to deliberate, convicting Hankton 10 to 2. They're pointing the finger at Telly Hankton, a man who's been called the crime boss of New Orleans. New Orleans, the murder capital, is one of the most grimiest cities on the map, home to some of the most violent streets in America. These mean streets would birth one of the most feared men in the city, Wild Telly Hankton, a.k.a. Third. Today we're going to talk about the Hankton Drug Organization, the biggest narcotics empire in the history of the Bayou, the Big Easy down in New Orleans. Uh, just last week, the entire uh, infrastructure of the organization was brought down in a giant racketeering and murder trial. In the early 90s, the Hankins would be a force to be reckoned with in the main streets of New Orleans. However, the real street beef wouldn't begin until the early 2000s, right before Hurricane Katrina. Telly's people, George Cup Hankton, was a certified stepper and a big dog in the city. It would be rumored that Cup had Holly Grove on lock. Contrary to popular belief, Cup wasn't the money man behind Cash Money Records. The Hankton boys were more of the muscle than the plug for Cash Money Records. It would be rumored that Third would have his Josephine neighborhood in a chokehold, bringing in multiple keys per week and selling nothing less than a quarter bird. Telly would rule his hood with an iron fist, not allowing any outside drugs to be sold. If you weren't copying from Wild, you couldn't push your product. Not everyone would agree with Telly's demands as Brian Pluck Broussard would start pumping 11.5 heroin, that boy on the set. Heroin users describe the high as euphoric, a feeling like no other, but it doesn't last. It's alleged that eight months before the untimely demise of George Cup Hankton, Telly and Troy Hankton would slide on Dernie, Tutu, and Kareem Peters while parked in front of the Red Rooster Snowball Stand down the street from the Noya. Tutu and Dernie would go unharmed as Kareem, whom was hit, would speed off. And you had a group of uh, Hankton organization lieutenants led by a guy by the name of Brian Pluck Bussard. Brian Pluck Bussard was shot but wasn't killed. Pluck was bumping that dog food and copped the new blue Nissan Maxima. It is alleged that Telly would threaten Pluck about slinging that foil down the street from Miss Shirley's house. Pluck would not take those threats lightly and begin to run his mouth on the block about how he was going to crush Wild. In typical third fashion, Telly would put in work as retaliation against Pluck's death threats. It is rumored that the failed hit on Tutu and Derny prompted the retaliation hit on Cup, who was caught slipping in front of a Girt Town car wash in December of 2007. Stewart and Reed both were suspects in Cup Hankton's killing, but were never arrested. This killing would send Wild Kelly Hankton into full out guerrilla mode. In 2009, Tutu Reed was killed uh, by Mooney Porter and Telly Hankton on, on a porch in, uh, in New Orleans. They, they, they got out of a car and opened fire on him. Mooney Porter was known for uh, being a two-fisted shooter. <laughs> And his calling card were a lot of shell casing. 
spring of 2008 has got to be one of the most heinous murders ever uh, committed in the gangland uh, territory of the bayou. Uh, Telly Hankton and his cousin, Reese Hankton, were chasing Darnell Durney Stewart. They found him outside a club and began chasing him with their car. Dr. Hankton is accused of running down Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue in Central City and shooting him in the face. Durney Stewart ended up crashing his car, getting on foot, and uh, running away from the, uh, the Mustang that was being driven by Telly Hankton and Reese Hankton. They eventually caught up to Darnell Stewart and hit him with the car, sending him, uh, witnesses say, 10 feet in the air. Uh, came down to the ground, car came to a stop. Telly Hankton gets out of the car with a pistol, pistol whips Stewart in front of a group of people in front of a club called Jazz Daiquiri. Last decade, at least six people have been killed there. In May of 2008, a man was shot and killed just outside of the Jazz Daiquiri Lounge. Uptown crime boss Telly Hankton was convicted in that case. And then unloads his clip into him at point blank range. While Telly Hankton would prove that he wasn't to be played with when it comes to his life, family, money, and work on the streets. Third, would crush any and all ops that stood in his way. The mayor, ADA, governor, and police chief would identify Telly as the most dangerous man on the streets of New Orleans. Telly Hankton, once dubbed one of the city's most dangerous criminals. A man once described as one of New Orleans' most dangerous criminals. And instead, they're pointing the finger at Telly Hankton, a man who's been called the crime boss of New Orleans. The victim's brother testified in the murder trial of Telly Hankton, also known as one of the most dangerous men in New Orleans. Some would agree. Someone say that it was all a ploy to take Wild off the streets of New Orleans. Several members of the Young Melf Mafia were slaughtered on the corner of Josephine and Danielle. This massacre would take the city by storm. Michael Mike Mike Anderson would be arrested for this heinous act, but later the charges would be dropped. It's after one of the city's most high profile murders, federal investigators say police arrested the wrong guy. Michael Anderson was accused of shooting five teens in Central City back in 2006, but federal prosecutors say he was not the one responsible. And instead, they're pointing the finger at Telly Hankton, a man who's been called the crime boss of New Orleans. WDSU News reporter Travis Mackle is here with what this means for Anderson, who was first charged for this. Well, most likely nothing because his convictions were vacated years ago, but the fact the feds now say Hankton is the trigger man could prove detrimental at his upcoming murder trial. NOPD would charge Telly while Hankton would be in the killer. Not everyone would believe that Telly Hankton was the vicious drug lord that the NOPD, the DOJ, the ADA, and a few citizens of New Orleans were painting him out to be. In fact, there were so many inconsistencies with evidence that the trial had a hung jury. We can't let a street, uh, a rich, powerful street thug intimidate the whole justice system. The district attorney's office will retry the man once called the most dangerous criminal in New Orleans, but experts say the case sets a bad precedent. The trial for Telly Hankton, the man once said to be part of a notorious crime family, ended in a hung jury, and a criminologist says this case could have a ripple, in, a ripple effect on the criminal justice system. WDSU reporter Simony Chewin has tonight's big local story. Simony? Scott, experts worry that this hung jury could set a negative tone for any future convictions. This is a chilling outcome. After two days of testimony, a jury could not reach a verdict in the murder trial of Telly Hankton. Tulane criminologist Peter Scharf says this is not an average murder trial, considering the 35-year-old Hankton is also described as a powerful drug lord and hitman in uptown New Orleans. He's a guy who shoots people in the face, runs you over and shoots you in the face. He's a million dollar bail and has the best lawyer in the city. Prosecutors say he killed Darnell Stewart in May of 2008, chasing him down on South Claiborne and then shooting him several times, all as revenge for a cousin's death. 
The DA's office introduced surveillance video provided by a daiquiri shop that caught the gruesome murder on tape and an eyewitness who testified to the killing. But a defense witness provided Hankton an alibi, testifying she and Hankton were having drinks at the W Hotel at the time of the murder. This is fear city. Uh, fear got worse is all you can say and that uh, they, this is a case you cannot lose. But in a city plagued with violent crime where witnesses are afraid to come forward, and in this case, the eyewitness even had to be escorted out of the judge's chambers after his testimony, Sharp worries this hung jury could implicate other cases. This is violence with a lot of resources, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that there are risks. No one wants to be a dead hero in these kind of cases, and that's tragically a possibility in these kind of cases. Hankton is set to stand trial in September for the June 2009 killing of Jesse Reed, which prosecutors say was also a revenge killing. Hassan Williams, an eyewitness to that murder, was killed two weeks later. Police say the same gun was used in both deaths. Hankton was behind bars at the time.